Happy Monday, everybody, and welcome to 2022's Ruzel Scumbassador Facebook Live demonstrations. We took the end of the year off. We took January off, but uh, we are back better than ever and kicking it off with our Scumbassador, Stephanie Buckley. I'm Carrie Fonte. I'm with Ruzel Education, and I'm your host. If you've got questions, comments, or feedback, please type them into the comment bar. I'll introduce Steph. I'll introduce. I'll interrupt Steph. Yeah, I'm out of <laughs> I'll interrupt Steph when the time is right, and we'll get you the answers. So with that, I'll stop talking, and Stephanie, take it away. Hey, thank you. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I know everybody's all over the world today. Um, happy 2022. Um, thanks for uh, being in with me today and kicking off the new year. Uh, I have my buddy Brandon here. He's my model. And I'm going to be doing something a little bit different for you guys today. Uh, you know, I know you're used to seeing a lot of clipper over homework, but uh, we've been actually working on a new result university. And today I'm going to be giving you a little bit of two of our new cuts. I'm going to be using a little bit of our skin fade. So I'm actually going to be using clippers with guards on them. And then up top, I'm actually going to be showing you a little bit of our uh, our crop texture cut. Okay, so definitely something a little bit different, but we're still going to be utilizing our, uh, our baseline and all that fun stuff. So let's get into this. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to spray down Brandon's hair. Of course, I got my Bruzel hair tonic in there. Smells oh so good to help break down all of the product. I just want to put that on the top of the hair surround. This way, I can actually get some nice clean sections. Okay. And with this, I'm actually going to use our the baby list sectioning too. The little Velcro section, these are great for short hair, helps keep it out of the way. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna actually bend this down so you can see. This nice. be all nice and up close for you. <clears throat> okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on my right hand side. Sorry, guys, I'm gonna just actually adjust this. See what I'm doing. Okay, we're going to create a strong horizontal baseline just below the widest part of the head. I'm going to be using my trimmer first. Okay. I'm going to take it just a little lower because we do, we're actually going to take off and beard and everything afterwards. If I have time, I'll do it on here, but if not, we're just going to keep it to the head up. So I'm going to be using my teeth up. I'm creating that strong horizontal baseline. Keeping my teeth up, that rocking motion. So I'm not trying to make a hard line. That's why I'm not kind of like snapping in and bringing it down. Sometimes that'll actually make a little line. And then going back through and blending that away is not so much fun. Okay, so I'm going to go right around. Starting from the front, do some of that. I know what I like to do is actually come right back around again. Put it down. That way I can make sure I have balance. And obviously, if I was doing this behind the chair, I'd have my mirror to look at. Make sure I got my symmetry and balance. And then connecting where it's at to the sound effect. Okay, so these are my little baby brushes. These are my favorite things to use for days. It's literally like a on our baby stuff. It's a nice soft brush. We can find a lot of big brushes and really rough. You can kind of irritate the skin. 
So this is nice and soft when it goes. Get all the hair out of the way. Plus, you know, they come in some nice top colors of baby pink and baby blue. Okay. okay, so see now I've just created that nice, strong, horizontal baseline. And now what I'm going to do is actually start with the number two guard. Okay, and this is a method that we've come up with. We actually like to call one, two, three. Okay, which is having the arm close, half open. I'm sorry, open, half open, close. close. Okay, so I'm going to start with the number two. And now that I have my baseline here, I'm actually going to take this up to where the haircut is going to connect to the top. Okay. My arm is closed. And I'm bringing this all the way up. And this is my number two. Okay, so now this is your way for things, but now I'm going to take this and go half open. This way I'm going to go a little bit higher than I did before. Really just run that away. You can definitely see it more as I go down. And I'm going to go on the right back and center back. So again, on this, we're going to work from the front to center back and then from the front to center back, which we do with most of our sets. And now I have that completely closed. Again, and just rocking away and bring that a little bit higher again. And this is pretty good. It removes all the bulk first. And that allows us to see bone structure and growth patterns. So that way you can develop placement where your fade is going to be. So now I have my number one guard. Okay, again, I'm going to start off with clothes. I'm going to go about a half inch higher than that baseline. So every time I'm pretty much starting with a new bar, right, I'm actually creating a new kind of baseline. So now that is my one close. And you can kind of see that, right? Go half open. So I'm going to go a little bit higher. You know, it might sound like a lot of steps, but like as we're actually doing this, you know, it's pretty quick. Of course, it seems a little slower. I'm breaking it down a little more, so let me see everything I'm doing. And then I'm going to be fully open. Okay. Hey, Steph. Yes. However you're facing, it's just got a little kind of muted trying to hear you over the clippers. Okay. But when you were turning like this way, we could hear you better. So I don't know. You know, technology, we're having that love-hate relationship. Can you hear me a little better right now? Oh, my gosh. That's much better, much clearer. Thank you. Okay. No problem. Okay. So now, again, I have – it's completely open, right? So I started with the one guard. Went about a half inch above, pass through first with it fully closed, half open, and now open. Okay, and I'm just going a little bit higher than the last pass through. But you can hear the clipper, you can hear it actually cutting the hair. So when there's not really hair to cut, it, you won't hear that sound. Okay, and I like to go through again with like the corner from my teeth. Just a really kind of like point cut. And make that nice smooth transition. Okay, so that's the one guard. And now I'm gonna go through with my half guard. Again, starting at close, fully close. Going about a half inch above. 
that bass line. Working all the way to the center back. You can see just how that gradient fade is kind of happening. Okay, now I'm going to go to half open. Again, going a little bit higher. You know, we had a training, I think it was back in April, um, and that was like the first time that we had seen these. And I'm gonna go close. And it was really exciting because I know, even for me in like school and stuff, there's never been really any material on skin fades. It's just kind of been one of those things that you just figure out and jump into, you know, where everything else, we've had a lot of material and other haircuts. So it was really cool to see this broken down step by step with visuals. Okay, so that's my half. And the last step is I'm gonna actually just use no guard. Close. Okay, again, just coming up and erasing that line. Barb is completely close. And this is definitely when like, you know, you don't want to press really hard. It's very light. If you press too hard, you can end up making like little bits and taking too much out. And now half open. Going a little higher than I was before. You know, that lever, I mean, I can adjust it. If I see any like little shadows, this is a lot of times I'll be using my mirror. I know it's easier to see those shadows from a distance, having that perspective instead of just being right on it. So I'm kind of using my, my camera right now as my mirror. Okay, now fully open. Okay, I'm just doing that past you. So you get that nice blend Ooh. skin, right? Starting from the front. Going to center back. Okay, now you can see that side, the baseline. Now it's all blended. All right. Any questions out there? Is what we've we done so far? Nothing, but I just put a memo up there saying if you have any questions, please uh, type it in. <laughs> We love when they interact. We love when everybody watching interacts with us. So please do that. And then don't forget, let us, Steph and I know where you're watching from, where around the world you are. I know. It's always cool to hear all the places everybody's from. All right. So again, now I'm coming back to the other side. <clears throat> and I'm going to be starting again from the front to center back. I've got my number two guard. This is going to be fully closed and I'm going to go right up to where the hair is going to reach the haircut, the top of the hair. we am taking that bulk off. You know, to keep in mind too when using guards, you can see the growth pattern. This hair is pretty strong going back, so you got to go against the grain. 
to get it really even. So sometimes you gotta like move it around a few different ways. Cause if not, the hair is not gonna be pulled through the combs of the guard and that. Okay. Connecting right to the back. <clears throat> Half open. And again, just a little bit higher than you did before. And then fully open. You know, it, it seemed a little backwards at first when I saw this going from fully closed, because we know that's the shortest, going half open and all the way open. It seemed a little backwards because I used to kind of do it before, but then actually doing this, it was just like, whoa, all right. It made sense to kind of just see it blend away a little bit. All right, one guard. On about a half inch from that baseline. To the center back. You know, so essentially, every time with that new guard, I'm creating a new baseline. And then I'm actually going through and blending it away. Connecting to the other side. And then pull it open. Nice little, uh, little random fact for you guys the song that is always in my head, especially being behind the chair with all these. Little hairs is big pun. Little brown hairs everywhere. That song's got to be playing in my head every day behind the chair. I don't know how or why. But it's a wee fair. Hey, I'm Steph. talking about. Yeah. There was just a question. It says, I have not seen techniques taught by SCORM before. Are these new to the SCORM curriculum? And I know you mentioned that earlier, but some other people have joined us. So can you just. Uh, Tell again what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, so traditionally, our haircuts, you know, most of the time we do actually use a lot of clipper over comb. We don't use guards. So this is actually a new technique that we've added to our arsenal um, with a skin fade. Obviously, clipper over comb is a little tougher to do. <clears throat> with clipper over comb, not impossible, but... It's just really cool that we actually came up with material to do a step-by-step -step for um, a skin fade using guards. Can I just talk so for a second, is... Steph? Do you mind? Go for it. So everybody that's watching, we're launching Rizal University this year. We're not ready to give you everything about Rizal University, but there are new haircuts like what Steph is showing you with the skin fade. There are some new techniques. It just gives us a much more well-rounded kind of curriculum and portfolio. I mean, we're known for our classic looks and the pompadours, but not everybody wants that. So we needed to add some other things and Steph is giving you a sneak peek today. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you for letting me do an no infomercial. <laughs> <laughs> anytime, anytime. Okay, so I'm going back here. This is with my half guard. Again, with the now half open, bringing that up a little bit higher. 
You see, I'm going a little bit more on an angle with my clipper because his hair kind of grows straight back on this side. <laughs> You know, and I can see those little areas of like shadow, you know, from different areas of the head where there might be like a little dip or just denser little pockets of hair. So that's what like going through and actually it's kind of like point cutting, right? With just the corner teeth of my flipper. Okay. So now that is my half guard, and I'm going to go back through with no guard, really close. I'm just going and really erasing that line. Okay. That's just with my blade fully closed. And I'm gonna go half open, coming up a little bit more. Just really getting rid of any of those shadows. To blend that line away. Sometimes going back through, I can kind of see little layers, so I just closed it. Just kind of go back through. Okay. And now fully open. Coming a little bit higher than I did in that last pass through. Talking about songs stuck in the head, I past weekend I actually had a two-year-old niece sleep over, and I don't know if you've ever tried to reason with a kid and what to watch, but we watched Encanto like 300 times, which is very cute the first time, but and the 600th time, but I've had those songs stuck in my head all weekend. So now I'm just actually going through with the trimmer. This is what I use first to actually make that uh, first baseline. And now I'm going through just actually detailing nice and softly with the corner of my blade. Make sure that we have any of those darker spots. So now I have a skin fit on both sides. Okay. I'm just going to go through those little hairs off his neck. And now I'm going to go through with my foil shaver and just bring up a little bit. foil shaver you could definitely also use a straight razor um, I do like to use the foil shaver because I feel like you can kind of go in and you can do a little tapping and that'll actually even soften the blend a little bit more and kind of tap just 
This is the Babyless FX shaver. It's really great. The battery life lasts forever. And the, there's two blades in there, so it actually gets really nice and close. Is everybody a little sleepy or something on this Monday? It's funny you say that, Steph, because there's a comment. Archibald Ziegler says, so relaxing due to sleeping, <laughs> meaning your model. <laughs> right? It said, so relaxing you're sleeping. <laughs> Am I putting you to sleep, baby? Right? No. It's relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now that's going through with the foil shaver. And then it's really blending in. I'm cleaning up a little bit right on my hairline. Okay. All right, so that is a skin fade portion of the haircut. And now we're gonna work, work up to the top. And this is where I'm gonna show you a little bit of our cropped textured crop uh, haircut. Brandon likes to wear his hair pretty messy and textured. Right, just kind of yeah. let it do its thing. Huh? Used to be more in control of it. <laughs> and now you just let the hair control you? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna start working on the right side but instead of starting in the crown like we usually do <clears throat> I'm going to start my transition right above the ear okay and I'm going to work forward Just taking horizontal sections I'm going to bring this right up he likes his hair a little longer up top so it's going to have a little disconnection on the sides <clears throat> You know, could we bring it down and definitely blend it up? Of course. But he likes his hair a little longer. So I'm actually going to just bring it straight up. Okay, and I'm going to take about a half inch off. Okay, point cutting. Working right up. Some nice texture going in there. Working forward. And now as we get to that front hairline, I'm gonna make this a little stationary. That way preserve that length in the front. Bringing it back to my guide. Okay. And now <laughs> I'm going to come to the other side, starting above the ear. I've got a little guide from the other side, bringing this straight up, point cutting. Working forward. And then after this section right here, I'm gonna make this stationary and bring the front back. So again, just like our other haircuts, I'm just going in right now and making my sketch. And then I'll go through and actually um, blend and texturize everything. Okay, so now I did the front, and now what I'm going to do is to bring the back into it. 
right again, right at that ear. I'm gonna bring this down. And this I'm gonna connect a little more. Again, the transition right from the faded part to the top. Again, doing a lot of point cutting. So I want lots of texture up here. Let's see right there, connecting the transition. Just bringing that right up to the top fun hair. section, maybe two. Just transitioning right up to the top. <clears throat> okay, so for the crop, that's where we started, right above the ear, working to the front hairline, then jumping to the other side, same thing. I'm working right to the front hairline and then going through the crown and connecting and blending that right up. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna dry his hair. Okay, I'm gonna use a little bit of our clay spray. I like to use this in wet hair and blow dry with it. I do like to actually spray it in my hand <clears throat> you know, sometimes you have to make sure you shake this first because it does have the clay in there, so it does settle. It is a little thicker sometimes, so, <clears throat> you know, the nozzle sometimes might get a little uh, blocked up, and if you spray it, it just kind of squirts out. So it's a little safer to actually just spray it in your hand. Okay. And now I'm going to blow dry his hair. He does like to actually kind of wear it up a little bit in the front. So I'm gonna hit the front first. So his hair also likes to kind of go forward. So this way it'll help keep that hair going up. Okay. Fun part with these haircuts too. I mean, just even using my fingers to go through and really get that nice texture, dry it all up. Okay, so now I get pretty dry and you can see that texture already from the clay spray. It's got some nice hold, but it's still very touchable. So I'm gonna go back through with my blenders and I'm just gonna look for the weight where I can see like his hair is a little heavy. Kind of go back in, do a little point cutting with my blenders. 
Take some of that weight out so the hair can just move. And I love dry cutting. This is my favorite part of the haircut. Um, you know, this is when I feel like the haircut really comes alive because you can see where the hair really lives and what it's doing now that it's dry, right? Because when it's wet, we can kind of make it do whatever it wants. But when it's dry, we can see everything <clears throat> that naturally lives in the hair as far as density and movement. <laughs> Okay. And I still like to go up with my blenders. <clears throat> I'm just still really soften the hair on the side. Um, you know, when hair is cut with clippers, it's it's pretty even, all one length. That sharp line. So going through and just kind of blending it a little bit with blenders softens it a little bit. This helps diffuse it a little more. Okay. So does anybody out there use the clay spray? Or any questions, comments? Here's a comment though. Oh. Pretty much have to explain that to all new people in my chair that the haircut isn't over when I start blow drying. Yeah. Right. Right. What does what does Rob Burtis say? Like that's when we really start the haircut now. Pretty much. That's that's now the beginning of the haircut. You know, you start to see the haircut. Steph, as long as I'm interrupting you, let me tell you where people are watching from. So we have, of course, the United States all over the country, Vietnam, Chile, the Netherlands, the Philippines, Pakistan, and Greece. Pretty cool, huh? Ooh, that's amazing. I wish I was in some of those warmer countries right now. <laughs> I think we're at, what, like 20 degrees today? Uh, no, it's going to hit 40. Oh, we're going to be at 40 today, so it's... It's a heat wave. But that's Fahrenheit for everybody watching around the world, not Celsius. True that Fahrenheit. Right. It was seven over the weekend. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so that's just going through and not really putting in a little more texture, a little more movement in that hair. I see. Just going through again. I like to give a little more love to the back sometimes because it's like over in the crown, <clears throat> apex area always grows a little faster, right? So just with the, like the rest of our haircuts, that little shorter towards the back, longer in the front, helps the haircut last a little longer too and gives it that nice great shape. Okay. Give her some of this hair. Now you can see the cut. This is our crop, textured crop, with skin fade on the sides. <clears throat> I'm gonna use a little bit of our new concrete pomade. This stuff is amazing. It's my new favorite right now. I guess it depends on the day. I always love different stuff. So again, use a little bit of product, rub it in the hands, make sure it's nice and emulsified like lotion. And then you just want to go through and really work it all the way through, making sure that you actually get it in at the roots. 
Because if we just go through and get it in the very tips of the hair, it's not going to give it that hold and the help that it needs to stand up, right? Hey, Steph. Yes. There's another, another question here for you. What's the purpose of the clay spray? I have a bottle, but never use it because I don't know what to do or what to use it for. Clay spray is a great product. <clears throat> I mean, personally, I like to use it as a base um, first. So like I actually use that in his hair before we blow dry it. A lot of my finer hair clients that like a lot of texture and volume, if you put it in beforehand, um, <clears throat> It's gonna work really great. It's giving some volume and texture. Uh, you know, I mean, we didn't even necessarily have to go through with more product. We could have just used just that on Brandon's hair. And as he's rubbing his hands through my- It feels good. Yeah, right? Which typically is something he likes not having a ton of product in the hair. So that's what the clay spray is really great for. Um, you know, you can use it as a base or alone. You could spray it on hair also to directly dry and then just give it that nice texture without, you know, weighing it down too much. Okay. So that is our concrete. And that's that haircut. Now that I know we still have a little time left. It looks great. Thank you. You're welcome. We've got a lot of really nice comments in here, Steph. So when you're done, go on back. I responded to a few, but everybody would rather hear from you, I'm sure. Nice. Um, here, okay. Nice work. Edward Scissorhands, someone called you that. You got some thumbs up. Oh. One of your patrons, I love my haircuts from Stephanie Buckley and the Ruzel product she uses. That's from Jean. So a lot of nice comments. Aww. All right. Well, are there any love questions, to hear it. Steph, before we let her go? We're good? Nice, Steph. Thank you. Um, we're going to be back again now every week, except, of course, the holidays. We won't be here on like Memorial Day, Labor Day, U.S. Bank holidays, but we'll be back next week. I think next week is uh, Paul Taylor Clench from the U.K. Don't quote me on that. I don't have nice. my notes in front of me. It's nice. But, uh, and uh, we appreciate everybody joining us, watching us. Thanks for your support. And we look forward to seeing you throughout the year as we continue with the Facebook Lives. Steph, any party words? Absolutely. Uh, thanks for being here with me and um, happy new year. Hopefully it's great 22 and can't wait. Hope everybody has a good day. All right, everybody stay safe and be well. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks. No worries. It was fun to hear you. Uh,